Hello viewers and praise the name of the living God. It's yet another week and uh, we are here for the word of transformation. Thank you so much for staying tuned at the Overcomer TV. We are so glad that you can uh, get to experience the word of God through this platform. Feel at home even as you get to share the word of God with Pastor Kelvin Njehia. Thank you so much. Hello viewers and praise the Lord. Wow, the Lord is good and his mercies are new every morning. We rejoice because of God's works of grace that he has allowed us to meet us again for the word of transformation, the sole purpose of being edified by his word, even as we seek to worship him. I am Kelvin Jehia here once again and I'm grateful to God for this chance to proclaim God's word to all of us. Today's message will be brought to us from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And let us read together. And you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you formerly walked, according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sense of disobedience, among whom we also formerly conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, doing the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by the nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved, and through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, so that one may boast. For we are created, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before, beforehand, so that we may walk in them. One is was if you this moment we want to talk to ourselves and, 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 and say, why must we be born again? Or why must we be converted? We have had people t t telling us every day, every day, that you must be born again, please be born again. And maybe you, you may ask yourself, why is it important for me to be born again? Why is it necessary for me as a human being to desire salvation? And from this portion of scriptures you've read, I want to tell us why it is very, very important for you to be born again. The first thing we learn that we must be born again because of sin's work against us. We must be born again because of sin's work against us. The Apostle Paul writes to us and he tells us that, you, that we were dead in our sins and transgression. You see, when we are unborn again, or when no, no, not in Christ, by nature we are dead in our sins. By nature we we are incapable of doing anything that is of spiritual importance, because dead men can do nothing. And Paul writes to, 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 to these saints and tells them, before they were converted, they were dead in their sins, and they walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of, of the power here, and, and the spirit which is now at work in the sense of disobedience. He is telling us that before we were in Christ, or well, before the Ephesians were born again, they were dead in their sins, they were unaware of their sinfulness, they were enjoying their sins, and actually, they, because of their enjoying their sins, they were by nature children of wrath. And friends, whoever is not born again has sin working against them. Whoever is not in Christ, they have sin that is, that is pushing them towards doing what is contrary to God's will. So that the totality of their being is, is depraved and it is completely covered by sin. In other words, they are incapable of doing any spiritually good thing. And that is why we must be born again, because sin is working against us. The only way for us to overcome sin it is by being born again because the old self is enjoying sin. The old self is committed to sin. We must be born again so that the old nature can be shed off and we have a new nature which is being renewed day by day by Christ. And therefore I want to tell you, probably the reason why you want to continue enjoying your sins is because you are dead in your sins. You are not, you are unaware of the great danger you are in because of your sins. You see, when, for example, in a mortuary, they, they, they were to, to, to break a fire, those corpses will not be worried. 
because they are unable to understand the danger they are in because they are dead. And when we are not born again, we don't understand the nature of, of, of our nature that we are subjects of God's wrath. And you see, friends, God's wrath is dangerous because God's wrath is going to be meted to people in justice because God is going to to judge us rightly and therefore condemn the unrighteous ones. We are in a great danger because of sin's work against us. And that is why we must be born again because sin is working against us. Sin is bringing us to God's wrath. Secondly, we must be born again because of God's work for us. We must be born again because of God's work for us. In verse 4, Paul tells us, But God being rich in mercy, because of his great love, which has loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, made us alive together with Christ. At a, at a certain point in history, God acted in a specific way, redemptively, to redeem people. But God being rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he loved us. These words are amazing. That yes, we are dead in our sins. That yes, sin is working against us. That yes, we are working at the sin. But here, but here are these words. That God in his rich mercy and grace, because he has loved us, he has made us alive together with Christ. That God has sent a redeemer. That God has sent one who is going to vindicate us, who is going to remove us from being subject of sin and transform us to be his children. We must be born again because God has a work that he has done in us. We must be born again because in history, God has acted. He has given his only begotten son. The son of God has become man. The son of God has obeyed God fully. The son of God has died on the cross so that he can redeem people. We must be born again because of God's work of grace in us. And you see in verse 7, he says that he has done all this so that in the ages to come, he might show the, sub the surpassing riches of his grace in the kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul is telling us, God has worked so greatly. God has done such a great work that it is surpassing. You see, when something is surpassing, it is beyond our limits. You can try to comprehend something, but when something is incomprehensible, we say it has surpassed my understanding. And God's grace in Christ has surpassed our understanding because he has acted so greatly, so powerfully, so that he can show his great kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Friends, God has worked so greatly to redeem you. God has acted so costly to redeem you. That is why we must never ignore such a great salvation. We must be born again because salvation has been brought to us by God. It is God's idea. You know, because we are dead in our sins, we would we were unable even to think of salvation. We were unable to plan for our salvation. It is God who acted. It is God who worked. Therefore, we must be born again because of God's work for us. God has worked for you. Imagine the creator of the universe, the almighty God, at one point in history, planned your salvation. At one point in history, God executed your salvation. You must receive this salvation then with joy because God has worked for us. We must be born again because of God's work for us. And finally, we must be born again because of God's work in us. In verse 10, the Apostle Paul tells us, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. God has a plan, has a work for you. God has prepared something that you ought to do. There are good works that God has prepared for you. And friends, we cannot have these good works unless we are born again. That is why Paul is telling us that we are born again so that we can fulfill that which God created for us beforehand. Until you are born again, 
until you have been converted. Your work is work in vain. Unless you are born again, your work is unacceptable before God. And therefore, if you need your labor not to be in vain, if you need your acts of service not to be in vain, then you must be born again. Because God will not accept our work that is done outside of Christ. Because all these works, they have been prepared and created in Christ Jesus. So, come on, according to Christ, that means you, have, you do not have good works. That means your work before God is unacceptable. You see, we read in the book of, of Genesis chapter 4, this one called Cain. And you see, Cain gave a good work. But because he did not have faith, his work was unaccepted. Because as the, the apostle John would tell us in 1 John, that he was of the devil. Therefore, you don't have been accepted by God. And we are reading here in, the, in, in these scriptures, in verse 3, that because we are of the devil, before we are born again, we are dead in our sins, we are of the devil. Therefore, our work can't be accepted. But when we are born again, we become of God. And therefore, our works, they are works of faith, which God will accept. My friend, don't tie yourself in the laboring for Christ when you are outside of Christ. Don't tie yourself in doing so many acts of service, not faith, because that work will not be accepted. We must be born again if we want our labor to be accepted. And maybe you might ask yourself, what does it mean to be born again? By being born again, we mean we surrender and say we have no works of our own. The only works we have are works of sin. And, that, and therefore, we turn to Christ, him whom God has given to pay for our sins, and we tell him we have nothing to bring. Simply, the close we cling. Be born again. It means to agree with God that we are sinner. It means to look at ourselves and say, we can't save ourselves and cry to Christ that he may have mercy on us. And when we do so, we will find him willingly to accept us. Dear friends, you must be born again because of sin's work against you. You must be born again because you are liable to God's wrath. You must be born again because in Christ, God has worked for you. And you must be born again because in Christ, God has prepared the work for you to do. And you will only accept that work only after you are born again. Are you born again? Praise the Lord. We bless the Lord for his mercies. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word is true and alive. Thank you for giving us a redeemer. That he came to this world and worked for us. That his work may become our work. And we pray this moment that would help us. To really consider the state of our souls and ask ourselves, have we been born again? And ask ourselves, have we received your unmerited and deserved forgiveness? Help us, O oh God, to rent our lives in accordance to this faith. I pray for us, O oh God, who, who are born again. Help us to walk in good works because you have saved us unto good works. For those who are not born again, I pray for them. Convince them, O oh God, and show them of their sinfulness and show them of the sufficiency of Christ. The Lord will turn to Christ for salvation. We pray for the Overcomer TV. Continue to bless us and helping us, O oh God, to propagate this gospel to many that they may hear you and believe you. We thank you because you are good and precious. In Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Baraka. Amen. Amen.